Everyone can hear me okay, yeah? Perfect. Um, yeah, so it's awesome to be back again, um, as Richard said, two years ago, just about. Um, I kind of was talking about Brookhooter, but it wasn't really a thing, and now it is, which is kind of shocking. Um, the fact that it lasted one year and two, who knows, invite me back after a year and four, we'll see how far we've got. Um, yeah, it's brilliant to share a stage with, with um, really distinguished people um, like Nick and obviously and the First Minister later on. And I was kind of invited on to talk about social enterprise and Google and stuff. And um, I guess, top level, I'm the, one of the executive trustees of a, um, a social enterprise that's probably familiar to you all called Social Bites. And that is effectively spun out of a, a salmon shop which has gone on to try to genuinely eradicate homelessness in Scotland. And last year, I know certainly 2050 group members took part in the Sleep in the Park event where 8,000 people slept out on literally, literally, the coldest day of the year. It was minus six. Uh, we raised four million pounds to provide support packages for 800 people to bring them from rough sleeping and sort of B&B &B and homelessness institutionalization all the way through to support tenancies through a housing first model. Um, so I just want to thank anybody who has taken part uh, or supported in that journey. Uh, the other thing I am involved with is obviously brew gooder. And long story short, we make craft beer, it's delicious, go buy it. There's plenty of places to do so and we provide <laughs> people with clean drinking water um, with um, profits. And so far we've funded almost 70 different projects, uh, particularly in Malawi, either that we fund for ourselves um, or that we have worked with the One Foundation around, and that's brought or helped to unlock clean water for more or less 40,000 people, which is insane, because I'm sure there will be a Celtic or a Rangers match, but that's kind of Ibrox or Celtic Park, and that still kind of fills me with a wee bit of awe at that. Um, but our mission is to bring 1 million people clean drinking water. That's it, okay, because I thought it would be kind of vanity to go through and tell you how that came about. There are the headlines, go and look it up. I've done plenty of speeches, you've probably heard it before. It bores me, it would probably bore you. Um, instead, I kind of feel like I've got the opportunity today to talk to you guys as, as Nick sort of alluded to, the future of Scotland and hopefully Scotland playing an increased punching of our way role in the world. Um, and I think that. If I think of 2050, outside of climate, outside of whatever, I kind of want a world where we're happier, there's more justice, it's fairer, you know, it's ultimately powered by love. But how we get there is sort of up to us. And I kind of think we always need role models. So I certainly um, think that you guys can provide that role model role. Um, and when I started thinking about what that looks like, I can only really kind of speak about the role models that mean something to me and have inspired me to go on and do stuff that hopefully I've inspired other people. And as soft as it might sound, the best role model I can think of is my mum. <laughs> so when I was younger, my dad passed away when I was very, very young. And my mum was sort of left in charge of three young kids. Some younger, I was the youngest, my sisters were a wee bit older. And straight away, rather than sort of sacrifice any opportunities or any chances at life that we might have by being in a single parent household, she went out and got two jobs, sometimes three jobs, just to maintain the standard of living that we had probably come to expect and that would give us the best chance to succeed in life. And all throughout that, she worked in the NHS for over 40 years. Last year she retired. Um, and that sort of taught me that it was very, very valuable to work hard to give other people something that they could go on with and start to succeed. But also it taught me that working for the benefit of other people, you know, in the NHS side, was actually something that could be very, very rewarding. My mum may have complained about who she worked with, but she never complained about what she worked on. And that was always very, very powerful. And as I grew up and went through school and sat my 11 courses and all that sort of stuff, I was always told, or you know, played football after school, I was always told I was the best. I wasn't told I was better than anybody else, but I was the best, and that any outcome that happened as a result of my efforts was the best possible outcome. And that kind of made me think that, okay, there's no risk of failure here. If I can do it and I give my best to it, I can succeed. 
And more importantly, and I think basically, which probably everybody here can relate to, is that I was told every single day that I was in love. And I just took it as for granted. So I had this overwhelming confidence in my own ability to try something and not have any risk or downside if it failed. And I was told that I was worth something because somebody loved me. And it didn't really strike me of how powerful that is until I started thinking about what I wanted to do. And the fact that I stand up here legitimately without cracking a smile and laughing to myself and say, I want to bring one million people clean drinking water through the power of beer. You know, that's largely as a result of her telling me that she loved me and I was the best. And, you know, there's a squiggly line, but it's one for one in correlation. But it never really kind of hit me hard until I was a wee bit older. And we started working uh, for Social Bites. And for those who don't know, Social Bites started its journey really by offering employment to people from a homeless background. One in four members of staff um, were from a homeless background. And it sort of struck me that these guys always had the same stories. They were always, you know, they had family breakdowns, they were born and raised in care in essence. They were abused as children. And I went through my whole trajectory of life and I thought, wait a minute, some of these guys may never have heard the term, I love you. They would never have heard that they are worth somebody to something to somebody else. And me and my uh, business partner Josh, we talked about this um, and we thought that it was our job, I guess, beyond building the business, beyond doing the fundraising, beyond sort of projecting the dream of eradicating homelessness, to actually just love these guys and let them know as often as we could that they were loved. And um, once you start telling people stuff like that, after you get through the sort of softness of it, um, they start to go on to achieve mental things. There's a few guys that have met Leonardo DiCaprio and met George Clooney when they come to Scotland. There's others that have cooked and worked in restaurants with Michelin star chefs that have given speeches to rooms that are bigger than the room that I'm talking to now. And that have done television interviews. But more most importantly, some of those guys have gone on to be role models for other people who are at the start of the journey that they've been on and hopefully start that chain of love again. And a brewgooder, I show a lot of love. I show a lot of love to my team, I hope, because ultimately they're the ones working really, really hard to make my dreams come true. And we also show love to the people that we impact. And I don't mean an emotional love. I don't mean that you have to physically fancy the person or <laughs> love the person that you're giving clean water to. But you have to value them as human beings, and that's when it starts to, to, to take off. Our love is to say, you'll never be able to find this. You might not understand the work that goes into creating a business that actually makes profit full stop, let alone then putting that into uh, clean water projects. But that's our gift to you. That's your opportunity to use that clean water source in a very poor and remote parts of, uh, of Malawi and to begin to transform your community um, because ultimately, whether you're in Glasgow today or you're in uh, Chelusi in Malawi, you probably just want two things, which is at the very heart of why we're here today. You want a better life for yourself and a better life for those who are close to you. And that life isn't just in the present, that's in the future. So, where do you guys come in? Because that's all about me. But like I said, you guys are the role models. You're going to be shaping businesses, big businesses, bigger businesses than Burger and Social Bike. You're going to be shaping policy. You've literally got the First Minister of Scotland coming here today, and that might send off a few signals that you guys are probably going to be pretty important and pretty influential roles in the future. There's a lot of people out there that need your love. That might be hope, uh, sorry, that might be refugees who are fleeing conflicts all across the world and um, who need hope. That might be people who are on the streets and need somewhere to call home. And that might be the billions of girls in our world who simply are held back from achievement, from education, from happiness, and from a fulfilling life simply because they were born girls. So I want you guys to go out today and be the role models and show the love to inspire a person who may not feel the sense that they are worth something, to let them think, as my mum let me think, that it was possible for me 
to go out into the world and change it for the better. Thank you very much.